Good evening and welcome to this special broadcast. I'm Rudhima Bhatnagar. Britain's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, is no more. She died peacefully at the age of 96 after reigning for over 70 years. Her children, including the now King Charles, her grandchildren, were all at her bedside at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, where the Queen had been since July. From a young girl of 25 who never expected to be Queen to the longest serving monarch in British history over a span of 70 years. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II became much loved and well respected. Like all monarchs, she was both an individual and an institution. But even as the death prompted an outpouring of grief from millions across the world, it also revived criticism of her legacy, highlighting the complicated feelings of those who saw her as a symbol of the British colonial empire, an institution that enriched itself through violence, theft and oppression. What will be the future as far as the royal family is concerned? We'll talk about all of that over the next 30 minutes. But first, we want to break down what is Operation London. What happens immediately after the death of the Queen? Let's break down those details. Operation London kicks in. This was the code name that was given to a meticulously planned details that were planned way back in the 1960s to chalk out the future of what really happens when the Queen dies. So let's break down the details. Day 1, Charles III proclaimed new sovereign. Camilla is now Queen Consort. We're also expecting the first official address of the King tonight, somewhere around 10.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Day 2, the body is brought to London by the royal train. What happens after that? Day 3, King Charles III, he begins a tour of the United Kingdom. Preparations for that are already underway. Day 4, rehearsal begins for the procession of the Queen's Coffin. Remember, tributes have already been pouring in, many already thronging the Buckingham Palace to try and get a glimpse of when the body is brought in. Day 5, coffin taken to Palace of Westminster. They're, of course, understanding that people would want to see the monarch for one last time. There will be enough time given for that as well. Day 6, the body to lie in state for three days public can pay their respects. So essentially between day 6 and day 9, that will be the time that will be given to public to come and pay their final respects. Day 9, the funeral will be at Westminster Abbey. We are now understanding that the Queen will lie next to Prince Philip and his body in fact will be moved from the royal vault. This is of course day 9, day 10 is when the funeral is expected. So Operation London, that plan that was meticulously planned way back in 1960 is currently underway. Remember, we're also understanding that there was also an operation called Operation Unicorn, which was also planned. Essentially, what Operation Unicorn was, it also factored in the possibility of the Queen actually passing away in Scotland at Balmoral, what really has happened. But let's understand first what's happening on the ground. My colleague Sanjay Suri, who's been tracking all these developments, is now joining us on the broadcast. Sanjay, I first want to begin by understanding any word that you're picking up by sources on the ground. Till about two days ago, it looked everything was okay. Yes, she was aging. She met the new prime minister as well. Then was it all of a sudden or was this some sort of a long-standing issue? Well, it wasn't all right uh, two days back. As we know, the only uh, evidence we have of that meeting was a still posed picture of uh, the new prime minister. Uh, with uh, the Queen. Uh, that is all that we had from there. And in that picture, we see the Queen looking very frail. And uh, relative to the sighting of her on the balcony during the Jubilee celebration, she seems to have been looking a great deal more frail. We also know the fact that she could not come from Balmora to Buckingham Palace for the handing over ceremony as usual was indicative. Before that, she failed to open Parliament. She failed to attend a church service through the course of her own Jubilee celebration. She failed to attend the Derby race. Uh, and that is a, an event that she's particularly, and personally, she was something uh, very fond of. So we have had uh, very alarming indications about a deteriorating state of health. The convention has been, the silent agreement was that nobody should talk about it until the palace says something and when the palace did then of course it was the end okay sanjay we'll continue to come back to you we'll try and fix that issue 
that connection also with you. But now I actually want to bring in someone really special, the Guards uh, Polo Club United Kingdom. Vivek Rawal is now joining us and he in fact has been a family friend of the royal family, has known the Queen over the last couple of decades as well. Vivek, thank you for taking our time and joining us here on CNN News 18. Um, as I was asking with my colleague as well, Sanjay, right, that yes, she was aging, but considering the fact that she'd always been this image of determination and, you know, always saw her smiling, uh, what is the mood on the ground? What is the mood among people who knew her closely, people like you? What are your thoughts today? Well, I will say that one of the uh, one of the landmarks of her reign has been the stability that she has brought in um, across all aspects of life. Um, so when you have that stability or that anchor, that rock taken away, everyone is still very much in shock. Um, there was always the expectation that she will continue forever. Um, and I think the the mood is very somber. There is um, a reliance on the fact that most people, you know, all their lives, they have had the queen in um, in charge of the country, and indeed the Commonwealth, uh, as we all we all recognize and, and love. So, the situation is that everyone is still very much in shock and waiting to figure out what the transition and what the next steps really are. Vivek, now I want to understand what has your association been with the Queen? For somebody who's interacted with members of the royal family and the Majesty herself over the last couple of decades, give us a glimpse into what life for the royal family looked like. The one thing I will say is that um, Her Majesty in particular was always the most down-to-earth person you would come across. Um, her attention to every individual that she met, and she's met obviously thousands upon thousands of people, that she would always look as if what you are saying to her or what she's asking you mattered. And that was the most focus for her. So she always made everyone feel, feel special, despite um, whether or not it's actually in a formal capacity, in a slightly more informal capacity, um, her engagements with us at God's Polo Club in particular is of note where, you know, she would attend uh, three times a year um, over the last few decades. Indeed, she set up the, um, the Queen's Cup uh, trophy, which is the most uh, coveted trophy in the world of polo. And she established that in 1960. And it has been, um, you know, when she attends that, her attention to the horses, the players, the events on the pitch, mm. as well as all the preparations that we would do as a club around it, were second to none. So it just showed that uh, despite having such a busy lifestyle, such huge responsibilities, when she was presented to any event, she would uh, fulfill that role with the most, uh, with okay. the most dignity and grace. I also want to understand and whether it was the young whether it was hmm. the young girl who would present her the flowers who would be made to feel extra special or whether it was the 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 winning captain of the team who would receive the big trophy from her she was majestic in everything she did okay uh that's interesting to hear that you're saying that she you know despite being at the position that she was she still wanted to feel everybody she met uh, feel wanted and important. I also want to understand, considering the fact that you've known the royal family, uh, whether it was the Queen, Charles, or even the children, what was her interaction, relationship uh, for members within the royal family? What was that like? Look, I will say this to you that, um, you know, within her family, she always was, you know, the grandma figure of the family. Um, you know, often we've had interactions where um it's king charles now would uh, would often talk about her and he would never mention her as the queen he would always mention um uh, name her as mama and um you find that whether it's the princes um whether it's william or harry they would always refer to her as grandma so it just goes to show you that she still was you know the the matriarch of the family and maintain those duties in the same manner as you and I would have seen her in a public application. 